SDV Entertainment. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, and the international community. speakers for today's lecture. I'd like to welcome Otumba Ufemi Pedro, the former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, representing the President-elect Asuwaju Bola Tinubu. Otumba, as you all know, is a Nigerian economist. Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzat to standing for him. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Next is someone who needs little or no introduction at all. He is none other than His Excellency Chief Emeka Anyoko, <laughs> CFR. <laughs> Chief Charles Ayam Osiwe. <laughs> and then, of course, the gentleman of the moment, our keynote speaker, the Right Honorable Boris Johnson, former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and still a serving member of the British Parliament. <laughs> seated is Professor Ehosa, Ehosa Osage, <laughs> Director General of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. From the inception of our lecture series, the Osigwe Anyam Osigwe Foundation. With the Nigerian public, their experience in managing human affairs. My first words, therefore, must be to thank the Anyam Osiwe Foundation for organizing this 16th session, this 16th lecture in the series. I am delighted to welcome our very distinguished lecturer, the Right Honourable Boris Johnson, to, to Nigeria. Mr. Boris Johnson, from our sustained conversation beyond the mundane in giving improved expression to the foundation, to the glory of God. For the purpose of clarity in perspective, it is important to note at the start of the proceedings here today, that the lecture series is not just an adventure in intellectual rhapsody. It is not a memorial escapade to glorify an individual. No, it is an adventure within the bounds of the submission of Emmanuel Onyeche Regoshiwe Anyamoshiwe 
on how we can vastly realize a better world order. It is in this construct that he variously expouses on man as the primary moving force of sentient existence. In his fragments, he avers that the purchase of the family and the inspiration for this lecture series was a man who during his time on earth was very much interested in the human psyche and essence and in the idea that human beings exist within a spiritual context and the manifestations and extensions of a divine being, a divine intelligence. He believed that an appreciation of this connection that we have to the spiritual ought to condition us to live lives that are moral and ethical and devoted to the greatest good. However, once we lose this awareness and of connection to this divine intelligence, this brokenness opens up the human psyche to negative and immoral influences like violence, greed, selfishness, dishonesty, and so much more, which then manifest in our communities and in the world as insecurity, poverty, inequality, immorality, and other social ills. The above is a fundamental thesis in the Iron Receiver Philosophical Worldview. And this is why the theme of this year's lecture is very apt. Rehumanizing human experience means going back to its first principle, the discovery or restructuring the connection to the divine. The rehumanizing this rediscovery is what will enable us to rise above evil and immorality and to live our lives according to the innate moral codes that we were designed to live by for a just harmonious, peaceful, and equitable world. Quoting from the material made available by the Foundation, discussions of these sessions will focus on exploring Ayam Osigwe's exposures on reinventing the human essence in its pristinist form. He's a friend of the family, and he sends his greetings. He's unavoidably absent. He asked me to come in here and represent him. Unfortunately, I'm not aware that I'll be giving a welcome address, but I'm glad to have this opportunity. Our president-elect is a man of the people. He's a man who cares about the welfare of all Nigerians. And this is his time to make a great impact in the lives of the people of Nigeria. The subject matter of this lecture is very apt and is something that is dear to his heart. And that's why he called on me, insisted I must be here today to welcome all of you here. Being a former governor of this state, now the president-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is preparing himself for the great task ahead to take Nigeria to greater heights. We should all be well assured that Nigeria is in good hands. Amen. Calm. Be confident. Nigeria is on a great journey. Ashiwa Jibola Net Nugu is the pilot. Thank you very much and God bless you. At the Aniyama Sigwe Foundation. And I want to pay tribute to the late peace Aniyama Sigwe, who so sadly died in, in January. And I think. Peace was a role model for women in the creative industries and a role model for female leadership around the world. And in the spirit of this lecture series, I want to talk about human potential uh, and the way we unleash human potential, because that is the prime duty of all of us. Uh, all of us, so many, all of the leaders, all of the teachers, of politicians everywhere. And I believe that that is the same question, that the same puzzle that uh, Emmanuel Asigwe, Anya was, was was revolving. And all my life I've been meditating on this question. It's called democracy. And it's very precious. And it works. And it's under attack the whole time. Why did Vladimir Putin decide to launch his evil and criminal onslaught on Ukraine, triggering the worst war in Europe for 80 years? Because he could see that the Ukrainians were choosing a different path. 
They were going towards an open, liberal, democratic system, a different system from the one that he was permitting to the Russian people. And you can see that there was a risk in this for him and that this Ukraine succeeded and aligned ever more closely with Western democracy, that the Russian people would themselves demand change and that Putin's own position would be under threat. Uh, and why, by the way, do you think he miscalculated so badly? Why did he fail affordably, cheaply, from where they live to where they can maximize their talents? Absolutely fundamental. Absolutely fundamental. And it's one of the many blessings of living in London that in 1853 they came up with the idea of putting trains in trains in drains, they called it, trains in tunnels. 1853. So that suddenly millions of people could move underground at high speed and they didn't have to wait in giant traffic jams of stationary horse-drawn carriages with the, with the dung, with the dung piling higher and higher on the cobblestones. And today, the mass transit system of London is so efficient that every morning it sucks in millions of people on tubes and trains and buses from far outside the capital and then every evening it expels them like the, like the digestive tract of a vast undersea. I wish to be touched that he made a rule when abroad not never to criticize the government of his country. But when he was home, he made up for lost time. <laughs> I dare say that the reaction of the president was exactly like yours because he lied. As I said, Mr. Boris Johnson is a fantastic journalist. And this can be attested to by many of those who have over the years 